Now I'd like to talk about some of the functions that we've actually seen so far, but which I haven't taken the time to explain. We've seen console.log. We've seen document.write. And another one we're going to see is, well, another two we're going to see is alert and prompt. Okay, these are four very basic functions which are uh, which the JavaScript universally recognizes. They're pre-coded into the JavaScript engine. So the JavaScript sees alert followed by two parentheses and knows exactly what to do. We don't need to tell it what to do. Um, I say this because in a little bit you're going to be working on creating your own functions. But first let's dive into these. Console.log, we've already seen what that does. We used that to test and make sure that our main.js file was properly hooked up to our index.html. Document.write, we've seen that this writes to the HTML web page. This writes, writes text or content. This writes, writes content to the HTML web page. We've seen that. Alert, this creates a pop-up. I'll come back to prompt. I'm going to save and reload my page, and we're going to see three things happen. Okay, First, we see connected in the console. And that's that console.log. Then we see a pop-up appear. This page says this creates a pop-up. That's the text that I wrote inside the alert. This creates a pop-up. I hit OK. And then we see the content that was written to my HTML document inside my document.write function. OK? These are three separate functions, all of which can display text or content using JavaScript. Console.log is by far the most useful and it is often used for testing or um, relaying information at certain points in your code as your code runs. Document.write is used considerably less, but it's still effective to know. And alert is useful when you need to create a pop-up, and sometimes you will need to do that. But let's dig a little deeper and figure out what's going on here. Alert notwithstanding, The reason, the way in which these two functions are running is using something called dot notation. Dot notation. You don't need to know everything about dot notation, but it is central to JavaScript syntax. So I thought I would break it down just a little bit and get you comfortable with seeing it. The way the JavaScript engine works is it sees everything as what's called an object. Okay, don't worry about what an object is yet. Just know that the largest object in your, uh, in your web page is going to be the document, the document object. And that refers to the whole HTML shebang. And this object has certain properties or certain functions that it that can run on it that which the browser recognizes. So when I write document.write, the way the browser reads this is perform the write function on the document. Okay? Perform the write function on the document. So this is the action and this is the target. Console.log works the same way. Console.log perform the log function on the console. Perform the log function on the console. And in telling it what to log, well that's what we write inside the parentheses. This is what we log. This is the argument. OK, 
okay? So log is the function. This is what we log is the argument. And console.log is where it all happens. Okay, action, place, what? <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, don't worry if it's still a little fuzzy. That's completely understandable. It's still early. But I, I want to demystify dot notation a little bit so that in the future, when you see dot notation, when you see document dot body dot append child, etc., you can understand how this works, how this is broken down. In this case, the document is think of it as like the parent object. The body is going one level deeper. This is actually your body element in your HTML. And you are performing this function on the body. Okay, function, place. The argument would be in here. Argument. And that is how you can create some very complex lines of JavaScript code using this dot notation. You can string together uh, quite a bit. You can continue to use dot notation um, to make a single line of code more and more sophisticated or more and more complicated. And dot notation will become clearer over time, but this is how you should read or interpret or think about a line like this. We're running the log function on the console. We're running the write function on the document. Okay, That's dot notation. Now alert is different in that it doesn't actually have an object on which it performs this function. It's just a pop-up. Um, so alert is a bit of a one-off, as is prompt, which I'll show you in a second. Alert is a bit of a one-off. Okay, so let's take a look at alert and let's take a look at prompt. Closer look at them both. I'm going to move this down here. And after our pop-up alert, I'm going to write a prompt. Prompt that writes that says this is a prompt. How are you today? Save. Reload my page. We see this page says this creates a pop-up. That's our alert running. I select OK. Then we get another pop-up, and it's pretty small, but it says this is a prompt. How are you today? And beneath that, we have this input field where I can type something in. I'm, I'm doing all right. Let's, let's not try to fool anyone. I'm doing all right. And I select OK. Nothing happens after that. But that's the difference between an alert and a prompt. An alert creates a pop-up, and a prompt creates a pop-up that asks a question or that invites a user to type something in. The prompt allows the user to type something in. And we can take advantage of that. So alert just creates a pop-up, but we can store the information that a user types into a prompt using a variable. To do that, let's create a quick page that asks a user for their first name and asks a user for their last name and then writes their full name to the document. So our prompts would be prompt, what is your first name? And prompt, what is your last name okay and this will work but what happens to what a user types in well as is it's just going to disappear into memory it's not going to be stored anywhere that we can then use it to write the full name to the to the document so in order to store what a user types in in response to this prompt I'm going to store this prompt in a variable. And I'm going to store this second prompt in another variable. Okay. Now prompt is a function. Prompt is a function. It's not a
single data type. It's not a number, it's not a string, it's a function. But prompt returns something. It returns a value. It evaluates to a value. And what, ev what it evaluates to is what I type in response to the pop-up that asks me the question. So I'm going to save here, reload my page. It asks me, what is your first name? I'm going to type in Evan. And then it asks me, what is your last name? I'm going to type in Winston. And they're stored now. They're stored in the first name and last name variables. Nothing else happened because I didn't write any other code. But in my console, I can now call first name, and it returns Evan. Or I can call last name, and it returns Winston. Let's try this with, uh, what is your first name? Kingsley. What is your last name? Papa Giorgio. If I now call first name in my console, it returns Kingsley. If I return last name, it returns Papa Giorgio. So we've now stored the user's answers in these variables so that we can use them in a meaningful way. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and perform a document.write function. And what we're going to write is hello, comma, space, and I'm going to concatenate it with first name plus space plus last name plus exclamation mark. Okay, let's see that whole line. So, hello, first name, last name, exclamation mark. So what I should expect to happen is once these prompts are both answered and these variables both contain the values that a user typed in, Evan and Winston or Kingsley and Papa Giorgio, those names are going to be plugged in to replace these variables. And we should see hello Evan Winston or hello Kingsley Papa Giorgio written to the document. Let's test it. Reload. Evan Winston. Hello, Evan Winston. Perfect. So that works. We executed prompts which return a value decided upon by the user. We stored each of those values in empty variables. And then we concatenated those variables together with some preset strings and wrote the result of that to the console. One more thing on dot notation before we completely move on. Um, some other, uh, another example of dot notation that uh, I can do this in the console that might clarify what I'm trying to get at here is let's say I have a string. It's just my name, Evan. Well, if I wanted to capitalize every letter in this string, I would take my string and then I would use dot and I'd run a function called to upper case, followed by parentheses. These opening and closing parentheses, they're always going to indicate a function of some kind. Okay. Anyway, if I write this, it now converts every letter in that string to an uppercase letter and returns it. Let's try it the other way. Evan, all caps, dot to lower case. Okay, so this is dot notation in action. We're performing this function on this. We're performing this function on this. It's an important relationship to bear in mind. Um, don't memorize these functions. They're pretty simple, but don't memorize them. These are the kinds of functions which you will come across naturally as you're working in JavaScript. There are plenty of pre-built functions in JavaScript which you will become familiar with both through the course of this course material and over time. Do not rush to try to memorize all of these functions. I am much more concerned that you understand the relationship between the things on either side of this dot. Okay, we're performing this function on this string.
string.